<clears throat> this is my sort of evening prayer. Beethoven's allowed to play. No one else. It's the violin concerto, obviously. Well, no, actually. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and uh, for the glory of thy people, Israel. Amen. These are the words that Simeon spoke. He waited and waited and waited and waited, and then he went to the temple and he saw the young Christ, I believe at 12 years old when he was presented at the temple. It's in Luke, I think that's right. I do get these things wrong. So, it's very important. God has made covenants with his chosen people, the Israelites, the Jews. They've strayed. Hmm. Just look at your Old Testament and, and the prophets are on a regular basis, especially poor old Elijah. They were killing them, the prophets. He escaped and heard the small whisper. He went off into the mountain. Um, 1 Kings chapter 19, that is. So anyway, here I am and here I am in this place in Harpenden, Hertfordshire, England. Now, because I'm here, <coughs> there's light, the light of the candle, a cross. There is the light of Christ shining from within me in this place. I don't get visions or anything. Excuse me, I've got a snuffle. <coughs> I'm 63, virtually 64 years old now. My legs a mess, I've got acute heart failure. I've been married, I've had a child, sired a child, my son, Robert Francis, committed suicide. I, I'm just, you know, I was training in medicine and then had my own small computing company and so on. I worked in business in the city in London and elsewhere. So I've actually led a pretty normal kind of middle-class life basically, to be honest. I'm no saint. That's for definite sure. But I am a Christian. This is the best Christian I can be. It's not a very good one. In my eyes, I could be a whole lot better Personally, that's what I think. But I keep trying. <laughs> Very, as they say. So I've been three nights in this new place here. This is my chapel. There's a reverb in this room. There's nothing in it, that's why. The world's a mess. This coronavirus 
just my leg. I've got to just watch out. If I sit too long, it just stiffens up and I can't run and walk at all. And I've got to keep it straight. No. Has, is, and will wake up the whole world. Uh, this is obviously, well, anyway. Uh, small radio, Radio 4, BBC News. Just heard it, 6 o'clock. Schools. Actually, youngsters are going to suffer more if they don't go to school, basically. You know, the chance of dying of COVID for a young person apparently is humongously small. I think they said three in the period, and in general, there were 500 in this same period in, in England. in general, last year or whatever. <coughs> well, that's a tiny risk then of, of youngsters actually catching COVID at school. It's more the teachers are worried about because they go into the common room and, you know, social distancing obviously is not uh, entirely straightforward. And the travelling actually, just, you know, yeah, if you have to travel the, the adults to the school to work, as it were, well, you know, you've got to travel then, haven't you? Therefore, you've got to kind of meet people, etc. along the way. But the downside for the long term for youngsters is pretty dire if they don't get normal schooling. Even I can understand that. Personally, though, curiously, if my son were alive, I would be organising home schooling. I would not let my own child go into that environment. Now, there's a the thing. My own son's committed suicide already, so this doesn't arise. Robert Francis, he would have been, well, 28th on November the 12th this year. As the father of a child, I would not allow my child to go into that environment. At present, there is no cure, there's no vaccine and there's no cure. <laughs> so having said all the previous, I'm actually saying for my own family, if I were to have been, I think that's the right tense, the father of my own son, I would not allow him to go out into that environment. I couldn't care less what the sodding little authorities say, quite frankly. I think they're a bunch of what's its person. I don't trust them. So I would homeschool until there is both a cure and a vaccine. Okay, we go. Who's the naughtiest, noisy one? <laughs> Don't think there are any adults with them. They're just out on the loose. Oh, hang on. Ah, uh, uh, dogs. <laughs> That's Daddy Bear, and then, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oops. Here we go. Right. <coughs> right. <laughs> <clears throat> this old machine, my mother's sister, believe it or not, not Pat, used to drive 10 and 20 ton trucks in Palestine. Um, obviously in the Second World War. And she, um, uh, sent me, well, 20,000 rods from South Africa because of my mission background, etc. Um, divide by about 15, I think, so it wasn't that much money. <coughs> but anyway, I bought that machine uh, through Patty's uh, legacy. Oh, creaky, creaky. Oh, man.